Hello and welcome, I'm Udhar Pratap Singh. You're joining us on a brand new episode of our special show, News X India A-List. In our endeavor to bring forth the stories of some of India's finest and brightest, today we've put together yet another unmissable lineup of India's who's who. Our first guests for the day are the co-founders of Love Gen, Bhavna Pandey, Dolly Sidwani and Nandita Mehtani. They cater to the ones who are open to experience and try everything new. It's a up-and-coming, uh, trendy brand. Uh, take a look at their story. Listen in. Inspired by high street fashion trends. Um, three of us were pretty much on the same page with it and and we just decided, I, we just decided to go for it. <laughs> they cater to the brave and adventurous. There's a lot of hate around the world right now, so we said, we want everyone to be about love, everyone who follows us, everyone who wears the brand, it should be the love generation. Allowing people to express through clothes. You know, we came together and it just happened, like she said, like we talked about it a lot with them and we started it. News X India A-List proudly recognizes Bhavna Pandey, Dolly Sadhwani and Nandita Maitani for excellence in creative fashion entrepreneurship. Hello and welcome, I'm Udaya Pratap Singh. You're joining us on this brand new interview as part of our News X A-List series. We're in conversation today with three uh, very special women who all together founded a very prominent, uh, chic and of course trendy brand called Love Gen. We're talking about Bhavna Pandey, Dolly Sidwani and Nandita Maitani. They are all co-founders of Love Gen. Welcome all of you to News X. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having us. Uh, let me begin with you, uh, Bhavna. You know, what was the idea behind setting up this brand? Tell us the story. God, uh, it's like, you know, uh, three of us have been friends for almost 20 years now. And, uh, you know, we've often hung out at parties together and at each other's homes and stuff. And uh, fashion and marketing was something that was common between the three of us. Nandi has been a designer for many years. Uh, Dolly also had a brand and plus she comes from an export background and I had a bit of marketing experience, you know, in fashion. So that used to be a common topic between the three of us and we used to discuss that a lot. And I think over many conversations, we realized that um, uh, we don't have a, a fast fashion brand in India, which is like which is an Indian brand, mm -hmm. which is like really cool and trendy, which, you know, um, not only would I like to wear, but even my daughters, mm -hmm. you know, so something like that, which can be spread over all age groups and mm -hmm. something comfortable and uh, nice. And I think that's how the idea came about. And um, three of us were pretty much on the same page with it. And, and we just decided, I we just decided to go for it. <laughs> Okay. It, happened, it all happened quite quickly, actually. Okay. Okay. Conversations took a long time, but finally, execution happened quite quickly. Yeah. Do you want to add something to that, uh, Nadita? Uh, before, uh, before I also get in Dolly, and, and also, what's the story behind the name? Uh, you know, Love Gen. It's a, it's a nice name, but but is there a story behind how you how you decided on that? Yeah, like Bhavna said, I mean, you know, this is something that we all individually wanted to do, and I think it was. Uh, just about finding the right people to do it with because uh, you know to start a new brand a startup uh, something on this level is not an easy job and uh, so we i mean the three of us connected our synergy was great so uh, and we all had our fortes uh, you know to um, where we you know we came together and it just happened like she said like we talked about it a lot with them when we started it and got into it it just flowed and uh, there was no turning back okay how did the name ca come about? A lot of Dolly, conversation. Dolly, 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 why didn't you take that? Nandi came up with the name actually, but it was uh, we wanted to create a community about love, and you know we there's a lot of hate around the world right now, so we said we want everyone to be about love, everyone who follows us, everyone who wears a brand, it should be the love generation. Okay. Going okay. forward, there should be no Gen Z, Gen this, that, and the other. It should just be the love generation. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Bhavna, of course, told us earlier about what all, you know, you, you bring to the table, your prior experiences, but what's the real USP of the brand, Dolly? If I were to ask you, what sets it apart from, from others in the market, according to you? Uh, right now, we are very focused on denims. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is really different about our brand is, I would say it's relaxed. 
at the same time it's very glamorous okay and simple and interesting and it's very cool and affordable so i think this is what sets it apart a lot of our design elements come in uh, to play our travels uh, the museums we visit whatever we carry back from our travels you know all that comes back into the brand okay uh, interestingly you know nandita you have your own brand as well you know you you've been a yes. designer for many years so how was you know what was the difference between this continuing to design for that and also associating yourself with another brand along with bhav nandan so my label is actually primarily a resort where a uh, boutique range so it's it's quite it's mid range uh, price price wise it's more mid range mm -hmm. and as far as love gen this is the mass uh, you know very affordable uh, brand for everyone okay. and uh, it was very exciting to design for love gen because uh, you know obviously we have a lot more styles uh, mm -hmm. for every season and uh, it's more it's more sort of uh, in trend it's more for the younger uh, you know generation it's a lot of sweatshirts t-shirts so if we if we could go a little more uh, you know uh, crazy with designs as far as um, you know like okay okay so and uh, so yeah. like as far as explore i mean you know uh, being more creative there was like no end to it because uh, like with my label it's more resort it's more feminine it's more uh it's a lot of hand work and beaded work and it's a little more personalized where as far as this was uh like we said more of a mass uh we wanted more mass appeal so there was a lot more scope okay so it was two different things for me as far as uh, designing yep. just talking now about this last year and a half of course it's been completely unprecedented bhavna uh but for your brand um, you know how has it been for for all of you uh, personally i'm sure of course very difficult as well but professionally how is how's how's the journey been for the brand through this to my to us you know covid pandemic you know uh, honestly it's not been that great for any of the brands and you know i mean i don't think anyone was in a frame of mind to really shop you know the last one and a half years people have been through so much uh, it's been um, turbulent times and uh, yes but you know somewhere you know we were uh, we were fortunate because uh, you know we've got uh, people you know we've we've got partners who've invested in brand and that happened before uh, the pandemic began okay. and they were very supportive with us and the three of us and then we you know we've been like very strong about it we made sure you know we've been i mean as much as we could we could keep our employees our people our love gen family together as much as we could and we've kind of you know waded through this whole time together mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully you know looking at the positive side we are hoping things are going to be you know much better now our uh, store in uh, malad which is in in orbit mall has uh, opened again the two in indore have opened again of course with restrictions and you know keeping safety protocols in mind yeah. we have another one in thane which is open okay. uh, we are looking at opening more stores this year fingers crossed our online um, uh, thing has started lovegen.com so we getting a lot of eyeballs there and uh, people have also started shopping from there yeah. and uh, fortunately our price points are such that you know even you know at times like this you know when somebody wants to indulge they yeah. don't have to think so much okay. like our t-shirts and stuff are all at like 599 499 our denim start at 899 and it's exceptional quality so so affordable so fashion wear which is of course important given given people spending power decreased um because yeah. of the situation okay dolly do you uh, you know uh, bhavna of course spoke about online do you believe that digital is this this new normal you know everyone's talking about going digital um you know we've seen our conversation today is also of course happening digitally um but for you as well do you believe sales are happening now more digitally or marketing also is happening a lot now through social media yes it's a huge part of what the world is going to be like but somehow i think there's always going to be a balance between brick and mortar and it will never be only digital or only brick and mortar that balance that you know that in between has to come in mm -hmm. and that's what's going to stay but i'd like to add to what bhavna was saying we've also collaborated with uh, anshul garg from desi music factory okay. and uh, you'll see a lot of us and a lot of love gen with uh, you know what what we do so it is going to be a lot digital of course um going forward but yeah brick and mortar we we're planning to open 30 to 50 stores in the next two years Okay, fantastic. So, the motto is going to be huge for us as well. Okay, so you're balancing uh, out the two. Yeah, we're balancing. Uh, you know, Nandita, since you you've been in this industry for for many years, um, have you do you believe that fashion trends have changed though in the last uh, you know two years particularly? 
um, with with you know people of course uh, their spending powers decreasing we see new weddings also uh, new going new ways of going out so fashion trends change as well do you believe in this last year now uh yes and no so most definitely for sure i think because uh, of the pandemic people are uh, they more in that comfort zone everybody is more in, you know wearing a lot more at leisure and uh, you know uh, like lounge wear mm -hmm. and people are not spending as much on your like daily wear and because i guess people aren't going out as much as they were previously but then again i have to say uh, weddings still have been going on and you know in our country everything is about the dates and the time so i think even if it is like even if people are having smaller weddings i think when it comes to indian clothes and the wedding clothes people are still spending uh, with the uh, you know bigger designer so i think it's it's both ways and and i think like uh, this time i guess there is a lot of online shopping happening i mean i think even for our brand i think our, our online game has been up for sure in this time and like i for one i think is the first time i ever shopped online during this pandemic i, I wasn't really much of an online shopper yeah. so that's a trend that's here to stay okay I think but, so. uh, <laughs> before we before we wrap up um, i have to ask you uh, bhavna on on a topic that's a bit away from this but still a uh, part of your brand of course the fact that you did a reality series in this last year as well how was the response to that and uh, and uh, were you happy with this new experience for you yeah i mean i never thought in my 40s i'm going to debut on television <laughs> but i did uh, it's been a fun experience and i mean you know it, uh, i didn't know how people were going to react i mean there also i'm working with really close friends and uh, once again all women and it's been um, Uh, it's been it's been a great experience and we were all nervous we didn't know how people are going to you know respond to something like this mm -hmm. but we've got a lot of love and uh, it's been uh, absolutely awesome yeah okay so, signing off now this show is all about you know highlighting achievers and and success stories so um, you know very quickly because we're running out of time what's a one line success mantra of yours you know that you'd like to share with our viewers uh, nanta let me begin with you i'd say uh, do what you love and love what you do Dolly, never give up and follow your dreams. Bhavna, my God! First, I was thinking of what Nandi said, and then she said it, and then I thought of what Dolly said. She said, "I'll go with both of them." Okay. Exactly what the two of them said. Never okay. ever give up and follow your love, your passion, your dreams, and go for it. That's and it. of course, love what you do, and I guess love, love Jen as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. So thank you all very much for joining us today on MuseX, and all the very best and safe keep you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let's turn our focus now to our next guest for the day, the Chairman and CEO of RRPS4E Innovation Private Limited, running the first Indian company to set up a unique nano machining center. He has won a National Excellence Award for contributing to nano machining. Take a look. Running a unique technology-based company. We started getting recognition. and our journey then progressed into trying to offer complete products he has won a national excellence award for contribution in nano machining you have to have the skills you need to have the technologies and you need to have that uh, the complete uh, infrastructure uh, to display which is we, we go through all those rounds music india a list proudly recognizes rat chodankar for excellence in technology Hello and a very warm welcome to News X A List. Today I'm joined with Mr. Raj Shodhankar. He is the Chairman and CEO of RRP S4E Innovation Private Limited. A very warm welcome to News X. Morning, morning, Richa. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for welcoming me on this show. And I really hope you will enjoy talking to us uh, and uh, getting some good insights on on what we do today. Actually, yes, that is exactly what we are here for. And we, the first and foremost thing I would want to know is about your journey in the electro optics industry and healthcare. If you could put some light on that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we uh, 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 our journey actually commenced, you know, uh, in the year nineteen ninety. That's when we first uh, ventured into doing some. sort of business opportunity in india but uh, the real challenge uh, the real uh, assignment that we took up was in 2001 when we built up a very unique uh, nano machining facility one of its kind in india and which catered specifically to the nuclear fraternity so that was the platform which took us into electro optics because most of the optical elements that are, uh, that go into an electro optics uh needs the nano machining setup and that's where i think our journey began in uh, 
early 20, 2010, 2010, 2012. And uh, 2014 was something where we did a very good job for the Indian Army uh, as an offset partner with uh, with an Israeli company, Elop, where we built all the optical elements for a thermal imaging fire control system, which gets uh, mounted on a tank. That's where we started getting recognition. And our journey then progressed into trying to offer complete products rather than only components, because there was a lot of value addition in the in the products actually. Uh, so we we got very prominent in 2018, 2019, okay. and we, we were recognized well. And uh, 2020 was the time where we diversified into healthcare, uh, and it was only because of the challenges that the entire world was facing due to the pandemic. COVID pandemic and uh, because we had this the thermal core technology which was the base we used that uh, thermal core technology to build thermal scanners for fever detection and then uh, we uh, used this thermal camera jointly with a Japanese company Aonix okay. uh, headed by Sadi Nuwal who is a renowned mathematician who has got powerful algorithms and what he did was he used the color patterns of this thermal imaging into uh, integrating with his color algorithms. And then uh, that's where the journey started. And we are shortly going to announce where this combination, lethal combination, will help us detect 12 diseases inside the body. Okay. Um, yes. And when can we expect that by when this year? Uh, we are not far away. I think the, the, the uh, hopefully within six months, we should have the announcement. Collaborations that you've done in the recent past, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, what kind of contributions do you consider that your company has made towards the Indian industry and what more are you planning to do? I think uh, uh, the era of this Atma Nirbhar uh, yes. of Make India is something which has always encouraged us and it continues to encourage us or else uh, life was very difficult for any entrepreneur to, to display his skills or his innovations because uh, at the end of the day, we have to remember that if we are going into some niche technologies or niche uh, products like, like the products that go into Indian Army, hmm. uh, it is very important that these products uh, go through some extensive trials uh, and these trials uh, by default can be anything between one and a half to three years. Uh, the use of this Atman Nirbhar plan under Make in India allowed us to buy technologies from uh, from global companies, uh, which made the buyer's life much more simpler because it was a proven technology. And we could then display our skills because the global technology provider will allow us to build 50% of those modules or components in India, which we call as the indigenously designed and developed and manufactured, the IDDM category. So this is something which has helped us to grow and grow not into not even in incremental leaps, but we giving us quantum jumps because uh, most of the programs that now come are mainly under Make in India, and that that's is, how you know, that is what I would want to ask you because you know a lot of entrepreneurs now after the uh, idea of Make in India and now after the idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat, you know, uh, are wanting to be a part of being entrepreneurs wanting to start their own businesses but there's still a hitch when we talk to a lot of entrepreneurs in india they still consider there's a lot of hitch because they say when they're trying to innovate there is a problem of funding here how what is your take on that especially when you're coming from an industry where money is such an integral part i would uh, with all due respect uh, i would have to disagree on this because uh, let's take my example mm -hmm. so when we started this company under make in india mm -hmm. Maharashtra Defense and Aerospace Venture Fund, jointly with MIDC and IDBA Capital Security, has opened up funds for entrepreneurs for defense and aerospace. And the, the corpus was almost 1,200 crores. So we applied for it and uh, we uh, it, you have to go through all the processes. I mean, you have to have the skills, you need to have the technologies, and you need to have that uh, the complete uh, infrastructure uh, to display, which is, we, we go through all those rounds. And we were blessed with the first funding, actually. Uh, Do you consider people are less aware? Or, yeah. are they to, or they want to skip the the routine? Or they want to find a shorter, easier way? Is that I the think Awareness is one of the issues which continues to be a challenge in India for everything. I mm -hmm. think <clears throat> this is one thing. You know, you, you go to a certain level 
and then if you have that awareness you can reach your destination but that's there's a big uh, the, the comfort zone is lacking in india and which is why you know you eyes and ears they say yes, you have to keep it open and you know uh, do it and, and so i think uh, that uh, banking also is getting a bit more considerate uh, with all due respect because uh, maybe it is because we've been coming with some good projects we've got some good technology providers we've got some niche innovative technologies there are challenges for companies or entrepreneurs who come up with some standard technologies where there are a lot of competition maybe there there's an issue but then you know you can always better up from the others that and, is what uh, i would want to ask you about your innovation aspect as you're saying that you know you target a niche and there is something the innovation is in itself uh, what attracts attention what inspires you i actually uh, three meetings that i would uh, always want to recollect is uh, one uh, meeting with kalam ji then a meeting with ratan tata ji and my continual blessings of dr kakodkar as a uh, who he needs no introduction and what they have uh, inculcated in us is that you know if you are passionate you know then you have to be passionate you know you have to uh, you, you don't have to uh, defocus yourselves and that's what we did you know we uh, and i felt that you know if i mean this i may be wrong or i may be correct but its opinion varies from person to person sometimes you are blessed by god so you tend to get that additional uh, divine force platform to take your head which i have been getting in this coming times we feel that you know if you are passionate and if you want to uh, do something this is a time this is the era and why i am saying this is uh, and i attribute almost 80% of this to atmanirbhar make in india plan and i feel that lot of uh, there is a gap between what is actually happening and we are being a part of everything when you do good things you will be, you will have criticisms you will have uh, uh, appreciation i mean that's a part and parcel of the game and we continue to have that but i can tell you today and probably uh, i don't know whether everybody will agree or disagree today uh, entrepreneurs are asking time from the army to submit a quotation or submit a sample and the army is after us or the buyer the indian army or the border security force or the military of home affairs or indian air force or navy they are after us to submit offers or samples and companies now are requesting time to give us an extension of 2 weeks or 4 weeks which used to not have that, that, that is good that is good news in all ways uh, tell us more about your global types yes we are uh, i think uh, after this atmanirbhar setup you know this is where you know we got lot of opportunities from global uh, companies uh, who 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 wanted to partner with somebody who are already a part of the ongoing technologies and which is where we got a upper hand over the others not that we are of a corporate uh, uh, corporate level we are just getting into the corporate zones we are doing really good well our growth pattern is going into quantum jumps so uh, the first uh, tie up uh, we did was with uh, 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 with a company called aonix japan okay and uh, who are world leaders in uh, facial recognition and uh, mathematical algorithms is a is a professor uh, by 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 uh, by profession dr sadi ural and he was the one who actually was looking for a right partner for thermal images now thermal images have different configurations so he wanted a camera to be configured exactly as per his algorithm and that is where we could we could gel well actually and we designed a camera and we did uh, uh, the the changes the interfacing and all it took us over a year but finally he he got the camera that he was looking for and now uh, uh, we mentioned about this 12 diseases you know once he uh, scans a image a face he will tell you the number of diseases that are present inside the body at least 12 diseases could be a sars cov2 it could be an influenza it could be pneumonia bacteriophages etc etc and the other development that is going almost almost 55% complete is uh, using the dermis of the skin to yes. early warning cancer which it's, is wow. which is going to be phenomenal revolution that will be path breaking yes yes because nowadays if you see and you know, i've seen a couple of my colleagues who 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 could detect cancer in the third stage or the fourth stage and uh, so now with this you know uh, there's a new industry a new era a new uh, uh, 
domain that is opened up where thermal imaging applying into medical application and this is going to be revolutionary i can tell you so this was one we did yes uh, the tie ups actually yeah tell me yes, uh, yes. that is excellent we are completely running out of time but uh, i would uh, you know the, congratulate you here for doing that what you are doing and for you know stories like yours help entrepreneurs understand that it is time for them also to enter the indian market because it's all about make in india it's about atmanirbharta and we all can do it if we desire to do it thank you so much for speaking to newsx thank you so much thank you it was a pleasure talking to you thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and we will you you see much more of from us in the coming times thank you very thank much and our next guests for the day are the co-founders of uh, talentopedia tushar mehra and malika puri digitizing the indian freelance economy with their business management tools they're helping over 100000 freelancers grow listen in focusing on digitizing india's freelance economy we help freelancers with our app to be able to better manage these clients that they're getting from offline channels and get more leads and grow their business over 100000 freelancers growing their business with talentopedia you know these platforms are not built for freelancers ourselves and people like myself they're built for buyers newsx india a list proudly recognizes tushar mehra and malika puri for excellence in business entrepreneurship hello and welcome you are watching newsx india a list we are joined by tushar mehra mal and malika puri who are the co-founders of talentopedia welcome to the show tushar and malika hi nice to be here. all right so let's start with you tushar why don't you tell us about talentopedia what it is uh, and how and when did you start okay so at talentopedia our aim is to digitize the indian freelance economy Uh, and we're doing that by giving an app to freelancers uh, to help them better manage and grow their business. Uh, so to help you get a better idea, Arthi, you know what's really interesting about the Indian freelance economy is that there are about twenty million freelancers in India. Uh, despite that big number, most of freelancing happens offline. And what I mean by that is, you know, uh, if you're a freelancer and let's say you want to start your business or you want to grow it. Uh, you the best way to do that is not to sell your services on an online marketplace actually the best way to do it is by getting work through first degree networks or through referrals offline channels of uh, sourcing work and that's actually where talentopedia comes in right. we help freelancers with our app to be able to better manage these clients that they're getting from offline channels and get more leads and grow their business so that's what talentopedia is able to do Right. Uh, and Malika uh, started this company. She will be better explain to you how and when it uh, really began. See, um, yeah, um, I have been a freelancer myself. I worked in the industry for five to six years. You know, I have a uh, personal experience with respect to being a freelancer and the challenges that we ourselves have faced. As the Shah correctly said, that um, you know, I've you know worked. try to generate business as a single one man army through online platforms like fiverr through freelancer.com and i could never generate any sort of business because i would spend my prime hours of uh, working you know on online platforms just to generate business so that's when i realized that you know these platforms are not built for freelancers ourselves and people like myself they're built for buyers where they come on board generate as many leads whereas the freelancers are just on the platform to bid for those leads that are coming on board but we are constantly cost cut we are constantly facing a lot of challenges with various different kind of freelancers who are verified by the platform thus we land up with zero work so we'd rather switch to offline you know uh, channels through first degree networks to get our own business and manage work that's how talentopedia was born so that we could uh, cater to the freelancers first make them our focus focus on their challenges and then cater to the buyers uh, picking up on that point malika could you also tell us uh, how exactly talentopedia is you know set apart from other such platforms like you'd mentioned how do you go ahead and help uh, freelancers um, apart from how you know um, also helping uh, and creating a marketplace for um, recruiters 
see like i said we're uh, catering to the freelancers first they are our prime importance they are our customers we look at providing them a business management tool through our uh, application that helps them to a manage their business generate leads as well and also grow their business see as freelancers you're a one you're a single person who you're managing a business you're growing a business you're generating leads you're sending invoices you're doing everything but it gets difficult to do it as a single person so talent media just helps you by giving you easy tools that can help you uh, take your business to another level through these tools it helps you doing easy right. invoices easy uh, you know easy payments uh, you know various different activities that uh, freelancers have to do with their clients they just help you uh, you know put it up on a pedestal right uh, tusha why don't you take us through the process of how talentopedia works uh, how do freelancers approach you and then you know go ahead uh, collaborating with you hey right, perfect so uh, it's very simple uh, we have a application on the google play store on android so if you're a freelancer all you have to do is download the app from there it's for free you know and uh, once you start so we have uh, these tools that uh, you help you you know uh, build your reputation first of all and so you use the portfolio to sort of upload projects that you've done you know list some of your skills some of the services that you sell also you know uh, we have a really cool feature where you can import a lot of the reviews from facebook google that you get from even other platforms and you have all your reviews from ex clients in one place so you build your reputation with this tool along with that you can use our tools like invoicing to send invoices to your clients you can use our payment links to get easy payments through upi business uh, debit uh, cards credit cards uh, you can use our task management system to you know really track the pro, uh, pro, uh, sort of grow, growth of your project you know you can even use our crm tool to track leads and uh, clients so this is the business management side and we also have a lead generation tool where basically you get leads right into the app and what you do as a freelancer is you call these leads you whatsapp them you sell them your service and you're able to eventually convert them into clients so both sides the business management and the lead system happens on the application itself and just to add to what malika said we are the only business management tool for freelancers in india there is no other such tool like this in in india uh, which helps freelancers to really you know uh, the, the, our tool adds value to the existing ways freelancers function you don't have to change your behavior at all if you're a freelancer if you're working getting clients offline so your first duty is use our tool manage those clients if you want more leads you just get leads in the app call them send your business just like the way you do normally so this adds value to the way they actually function that's the power of our tool. right uh, very interesting uh, malika also tell us about the journey of uh, talentopedia how has it been so far and also the future plans that you have for the company see uh, the journey has been um, absolutely amazing actually um, we have hit about 100000 freelancers on our android app you can install it if uh, you know if you're interested it's a google play store application we are growing at a very rapid pace um the future that we see is that as what ashar said there are 20 million freelancers in india we're looking at hitting about 10 million freelancers in the next 5 years so yeah. we are looking at creating as many jobs opportunities especially with the pandemic with you know when the pandemic is hit and there's so many people who are out of jobs so many people are looking at freelancing as their source of income um you know um it's actually given talentopedia an all new uh, you know a path for creating as many employment opportunities for these freelancers so we look at it as a very bright future ahead right uh, is there anything you'd like to add to share to that yeah yeah absolutely you know uh, like malika mentioned but uh, our our goal is in the next 5 years to have 10 million freelancers provide job to 10 million freelancers and with that we be one of the largest job providers in india you know yeah. and uh, if you're a freelancer you know this is the perfect time to join our platform and to start growing because i'd like to tell them if they're listening to us uh, you know with the pandemic a lot of the startups and smes who were initially a little bit more skeptical skeptical about hiring freelancers have really started to come into their own and hire freelancers now because they've actually sort of realized the power of freelancing and this freelancing industry is growing you know mckenzie's reports are suggesting that This is going to be a a a twenty five percent growth in India. It's already a one point seven trillion dollar economy worldwide, yeah. so it's only growing 
growth rates are phenomenal 2019 to 2021 every year on year every quarter we're growing 25 percent so uh if you're a freelancer this is the perfect time come on our platform and just get work and grow yeah we call it the future of work now i mean with the new way of working now this is the future of work yes that's great. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Tushar and Malika. All the best to Team Talentopedia. Uh, thank you for joining us on uh, NewsX. Thank you, Aarti. Thank you so much, Aarti. And our next guest for the day is a prolific actor, Mizan. Yes, after making his Bollywood debut in Sanjay Leela Bansali's Malal, he's now being seen in his uh, family's favourite comedy genre. Yes, the Priya Darshan uh, Comic Caper Hangama 2. Mizan is uh, getting a lot of good reviews for this new movie. Take a look at this conversation. Known for his Bollywood acting performances. I would have never thought that I'm ever going to be part of Hangama 2 uh, 18, 19 years later. He has made his debut in Sanjay Leela Bhansali's Malal. I am just grateful for this opportunity that has come and to be working with the people who are in this film. Music's India A-list proudly recognizes Mizan for excellence in entertainment. Hello and welcome, Amudai Pratap Singh. You're joining us uh, on this uh, special interview as part of our NewsX A-list series. We're in conversation today uh, with a young and dynamic uh, Mizan. Uh, welcome, Mizan, to NewsX. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Uday. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, and happy to be here. Well, you're certainly you're causing a lot of Hangama these days. Uh, and that's a good thing because, of course, your film's called Hangama 2 on uh, Disney Plus Hotstar. So, first, you know, let's just talk about uh, any Hangama memories. Had you seen the first one when it had released then? Um, and did you I, I did, I did. I, I was actually eight years old when the movie had come out in 2003. And uh, I remember going to Globus Theatre in Bandra and watching it with a friend of mine and his mother. And, uh, you know, ever since Jabi TV pe bhi aati hai or something like that, we always watch it, you know, till date, kabhi, you know, we're scrolling through the channels and suddenly we see Hangama on. So we always stop by and watch those iconic scenes. And, uh, you know, I would have never thought that I'm ever going to be part of Hangama 2 uh, 18, 19 years later. Uh, 18 years later so it's it's been a surreal experience for me and uh, you know i'm just grateful for this opportunity that has come and to be working with the people who are in this film well it's your second film so it is of course special for you um, and it's your entry you know full-fledged entry into the comedy genre which your you know your family has uh, has really made a very good mark in let me, let me right out there. um so what was the first reaction when they when they came to you with the script and you heard about the project what was your first reaction Funny thing was, there's no, there wasn't any script. There was just a name. Uh, I got a call saying, "Will you do a Priya Darshan film?" And mm -hmm. I said, "Of course." I said yes without any uh, hesitation because it's yeah. Priyan sir, and it is honestly an honor to be working with him so early in my career. You know, like you said, it's my second film, mm -hmm. so I'm 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 thrilled that I got this opportunity, and it's turned out to be amazing. And I can't wait for the people to finally see the movie. It's going to come out soon in like four days. Yeah, and it's special, of course, because you know it's it's Priya Darshan coming back after a, a while, and it's also Shilpa Shetty coming back after a while. So yes, that, absolutely. That added, uh, added, uh, you know, uh, that's an added USP. But how was it like for you, you know, on sets with the two of them? Uh it like I said, you know, it was a surreal feeling because there are too many things that are working in favor of this film. You know, in terms of putting the film together, there is Priya Darshan coming back after a long time. There's the title Hangama. You know, it's a big franchise. The producers, Venus, you know, Ratanji is, uh, you know, had launched Shilpa Shetty and done movies like Khiladi, Bazigar and so many other iconic films. So, and then again, you have the star cast like Paresh Ji, Rajpal Sir, Tiku Sanya, Johnny Deva, Manoj Joshi, Ashutosh Rana. So many veteran actors, you know, they are amazing at what they do. Yeah. And at the same time, there's Shilpa Shetty as well, making her come back uh, with me. And, uh, you know, then there's her song, Churaki Dil Mera which is an iconic song and she is in the original uh, song. She's in the original song and I'm with her in this remake. Yeah. So it's, it's um, I think it's it's too much that's going on. There's a lot of hangama happening as it is. Yeah. And I'm very happy and, uh, you know, it's turned out to be wonderful. And I'm, I'm glad I made so many friends, including Shilpa ma'am, because she is uh, a wonderful person, full of life. And, you know, today I think, I think she's aging in reverse. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's looking wonderful in the song. She is has absolutely killed it. 
and uh, you know till date she's maintained the same energy same dedication same work ethic so i'm i'm actually inspired by her and uh, it was a lot of fun to be working no, with so many no, people no, no matching steps with her with with the land i think people have loved it what's what's the kind of response you got to the song what have people been saying it's been great you know people have loved it they've show, showered their love to words as whether it's through social media or whether it's through youtube and stuff like that so it's it's been uh, it's been great yeah i have no i have no complaints and it's still going on there's a lot of hangama still to be done and we're taking it one step at a time there's another song that came out after which is chinta yeah. nakar and that song it also has received a lot of love from people everywhere and uh, now we have our other song coming out which uh, can you hear me yeah yeah now we have our other song coming out which is uh, the hangama title track so it's going to be wonderful and uh, you know i'm excited for everyone to see the whole film as it is okay you know uh, just talking to you of course about uh, you know about this 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 project and it was your second film um did you did you see this coming uh, you know when when you were of course wanting to chart out your film career um did you believe that you know things would fall in place like this that you would have this this huge second film coming up you know uh, it's so early in your career with with big stars with a big director with a big film banner uh, and also the the fact that it would be a comedy uh because interestingly you didn't explore so much comedy in your first film did you right absolutely no i didn't at all and uh because of who my father is and my grandfather is you know there obviously some kind of expectations that people would have once i enter this genre mm-hmm. so i'm glad that i got to do it with none other than priya darshan because i yeah. think he's the king of comedy mm-hmm. and uh you know and and the good thing is that his films uh, are situational based so then uh you know it's it's uh it's very um it, the people are going to be laughing at the situations not at the at act people actually doing comedy yeah. so uh you know i'm not actually doing any comedy in the film i'm yeah. just playing my part and i'm serious throughout the film but you find it super funny because of the situations that i fall into and uh yeah and it's been a completely new learning experience and way of working because priyansa has a very different way of working there's no script there's uh nothing you know it's just the dialogues are given to you like 2 minutes before uh the shot and uh, everything is improvised uh and it's a lot of fun i think everyone just ha- enjoys the process yeah. of his films and 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 the mood on set and the energy on set is the same as what's being translated on screen on screen okay did did you take any comedy uh, advice or any any sort of advice on films from your father or your grandfather before you entered um not at all actually because uh i mean they they've never they've never given me direct advice Mm-hmm. but we've always spoken about films and acting and you know over the years so i think all those conversations that we've had are some subconsciously somewhere in my head mm-hmm. and today when i'm finally able to uh you know stand in front of the camera i see all those things coming to my use and my benefit so it's just uh, happening really weirdly but it's it's coming out super good when did you first know that this is the profession for you uh, i have to just take you back into memory lane when when the time do you remember the age or the moment when you decided that yes i want to become an actor i want to get in front of the camera uh not at all i never came to me to be honest i always was into sports and music okay. and i was just lucky that randomly i happened to meet sanjay leela bansali one day and he then uh, told me he wanted to launch me and i think that's when i finally took the decision okay fine you know this is a great golden opportunity that's come my way so i should definitely take it and move forward in this direction and that's when i was finalized on the fact that okay theek hai abhi acting karni hai <laughs> okay it, it happened to you and when mr bansali says something you don't disagree to exactly uh, yeah 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 but uh, you know just looking back now at how malal shaped up uh, you know what are your thoughts now on on of course i'm sure you loved the filming it was a learning experience but the response from critics from fans how do you look back now and analyze that? uh you know as we all know the movie didn't do that well in the box office but at the same time uh people have really commended my work and complimented my performance in the film so i'm very happy with that because at the end of the day uh that's what's in my control and that's what i gave 100% of yeah. now baki you know there are a lot of people who play a factor in putting a film together so that's on my hands but uh, regardless but people still like the there are a lot of people who love the film as well mm-hmm. till date i i i uh, get messages of people who uh it's weird that today people saw me in hangama or the trailer of hangama or the songs of hangama and found out that i had done a movie called malal before and then have gone back to that film and tried and watched it on youtube or netflix or wherever they found it available 
and have you know uh, shared their views on social media and shower their love once again you know saying that oh we we missed this movie we're really sorry about it but we loved uh you know what you did in the film and it it really touched us in some way or the other so i think that is a great compliment you know for anybody because uh you know you spend a lot of time and uh, hard work that goes into making a film and then some when someone recognizes that i think it, it's a great feeling okay last couple of questions and these are before we let you go um one on the last you know um, year year in this, in this pandemic lockdown how's it been like for you how was it like actually you know stopping the shooting then getting back to it you know resuming everything again um how's how's the last year been for you uh yeah i think the whole of a year and a half has been terrible for the whole world and everyone's trying to deal with this pandemic in whatever way that they they did you know or are still but uh i to be honest my complaints are my problems are very small compared to the, what's going on around the world i think of it that way you know and uh, but regardless you know i've been lucky that uh, i got to shoot during the pandemic we we shot in october we shot for hangama in manali and then we shot in jan jan end in mumbai as well so uh, a little sad that you know this whole thing ha- happened uh, to the whole world but uh, glad that we are all trying to overcome it and move on from it and uh, you know dheere dheere we're getting out of it and getting back to normal uh, but also sad that because of that the movies are going to be coming out in the theaters you know it's coming out on hotstar now but uh, yeah i think the whole purpose of the film was to entertain people okay. and bring a smile to people's faces you know and i think we're going to be doing that regardless of it coming out on ott or theater so okay. people can today you know and in these times when the times are so tough for everyone Yeah. they get a nice laugh it's a good family entertainer it's been a while since a movie like this has come so i'm happy okay you're entering the comedy genre any any uh, uh, comedian who you look up to uh, you got you got a few great ones on, on this film so the there. ones i look up to are with me in this film uh, yeah. you know the the three that i look up to are parej ji yeah. uh, rajpal yadav and yeah. johnny sir yeah. and all three are with me in this movie so for me it is a god send that i got to work in this uh, film with all of them together Okay. Well, now it's time, of course, for the viewers to enjoy your labor of love. So, Absolutely. Uh, uh, over to them. But thank you so much, Vizan, for joining us today on News X. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. And our final guest for the day is uh, the founder of Cross Train Fight Club, Siddharth Singh. Being India's pioneer in the field of MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, he has not only represented India at international tournaments, but has also trained numerous fighters who've done the same. He is. Uh, now training a whole new generation in this space in india take a look at this exclusive conversation running a successful training brand so that was sort of you know my journey you know through school yeah. through uh, london and then muay thai jiu jitsu that's how i came back and started cross training in india by you he has represented india at international tournaments i went there for the world championship Yeah, and uh, I was competing at the brown belt level. Music India A list proudly recognizes Siddharth Singh for excellence in business leadership. Hello, welcome, Amrita Pratap Singh. You are joining us on this interview as part of our News X A list series. We are in conversation today with uh, Siddharth Singh. Siddharth is a founder, Cross Train Fight Club. He's also, of course, India's. Pioneer in the field of MMA and uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Welcome, Siddharth, to NewsX. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Oga. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. It's uh, it's it's taken us a while to get here, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Yes, very happy to have you. And uh, let's just begin. Uh, you know, from from the start. So, uh, you know, when did your passion uh, for uh, combat sports start? Um, was it school? Was it college? And and uh, you know, take us through the journey of actually quitting your corporate job um, yeah. to begin. you know following your passion yeah so i i went to a school that you're familiar with as well i went to this school in dehradun called the dun school and uh, boxing there was a sport and uh, my brother was already a boxer and he was a boxer who was doing pretty well uh, in our house so not too many 12 year olds want to go go and get punch in the face so i didn't want to get into boxing but because my brother was in it there was no option it was oh, sadat singh you know your brother's a boxer get into it start boxing Yeah. So that's how I got into boxing. It wasn't really a choice, uh, but once I got into it, I was already playing a lot of sports. Like in Dune, you play a lot of sports. So I was playing a lot of sports, but boxing for me was the most difficult. Yeah. It was the one that gave you butterflies, you know, before the before the bout. You got so nervous. 
and the entire school is watching. So it was it was an experience for me, and I lost a lot of my bouts, like up into SE form. I never won my weight class. I always lost in the finals. Okay. So that sort of gave me like this uh, this innate hunger to win and to succeed and to put in the effort. So my SE form, my class twelve, mm-hmm. I put in a lot of effort, and I and I won my weight class. Yeah. But even though school ended and boxing in school ended, that hunger never left me, mm-hmm. to be honest. And then, then I did my undergraduation from Delhi University. I was doing economics honors. And here I continued to box. Yeah. Uh, then I went through my master's degree to Scotland. And uh, there actually there was no boxing whatsoever. Okay. So that's the one year in my life where I couldn't box at all. Yeah. And then I got a job in London. And London, I, I tried to find boxing. I couldn't, never, couldn't find a good gym. Okay. But I did find a good Muay Thai gym. So Muay Thai is a different sport altogether. Yeah. It's the national sport of Thailand. Yeah. So apart from punching, there is kicking, throwing elbows, throwing knees, which just sounds brutal. Uh, so yeah, I, I remember calling the guy and I said, listen, I've done boxing before. Do you have uh, boxing in your academy? He said, we don't have boxing. We have Muay Thai. It's almost the same. And I went in and it was completely different because I was getting kicked and I was getting thrown in my head. And I was like, this is not the same, but it's a lot of fun. So that was my second element. Like I got into Muay Thai. And then one day my Muay Thai Academy was, was having this Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu seminar. I didn't know what the hell Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was. And it's apparently ground fighting. So the, the, I went for the seminar. I locked, saw a number of people on the floor, like rolling on top of each other. Yeah. I didn't know what the hell it was. And uh, they said, oh, this is Jiu-Jitsu. I said, okay, I don't want to do this. I don't want someone sweaty guy on top of me. Yeah. Um, but then there was this one small girl. She was about 40 kilos from Iran. She didn't have a partner. Mm-hmm. So my coach at the time was like, Sid, just, just, just go and help her out. You know, you've trained before. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go. And then it came down to sparring and, uh, you know, she told me that she's trained before and uh, she said, don't go light on me. Okay. And I was like, you know, I was 75 kilos, she was 45 kilos. So I went, I didn't go very hard, but I went, you know, I went to control her. And the next thing I remember, I woke up looking at the ceiling. Like I was, she choked me unconscious. So I didn't know what had happened. She had yeah. put me in a submission choke. And I didn't know what it was. I couldn't get out and I yeah. passed out. Next time we went again. And this time I went 120 kilos. So I was like, listen, this is, she's so small. And you know, everyone has an ego. So I was like, oh, my ego is like, I need to smash her. So I went in and next thing I know, 10 seconds later, I'm wake, waking up again, looking okay. at the ceiling. She put me to sleep again, unconscious in a submission called the rain naked choke. So okay. I realized then that I'd been training at that point for like a good 10 years mm-hmm. of combat sports. And there was this girl who was 30 kilos lighter than me. And she had put me unconscious twice within six minutes. So I realized that, you know, and this is a, this is a girl. So I thought in my head, I thought, okay, if she can do it to me with me being 30 kilos heavier. Maybe if I learn this, I can do this to someone who's 30 kilos heavier than me. Yeah. And the second thing that came to my mind was, you know, cause we are we're Indians. No? So I thought, imagine if like Indian women learn this, yeah. cause we keep hearing about like attacks on women and this and that. But, like, imagine if I learn it and I can teach it to them, yeah. imagine the impact that can have. So that was sort of the germ of the idea. And then I, was, I had a full-time job, but every time I would come back to Delhi, I would never find a good place to train. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of fake experts teaching self-defense and combat sports. So that was sort of, you know, my journey, you know, through school, yeah. through uh, London, and then Muay Thai. So that's how I came back and started cross-training. And then finally, of course, uh, you started, you know, the, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, but, you know, you, of course, also represented India. Uh, you know, in combat sport, just just tell us about which is uh, which uh, are a couple of most prestigious tournaments that you've represented in India. Which are the medals which are most special for you, Sadat? The most special medal is the most recent one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was in Abu Dhabi just before our long, second lockdown happened. Uh, I was actually in Abu Dhabi when the lockdown was announced. Okay. So I, I went there for the World Championship. Yeah. And uh, I was competing at the brown belt level. So mm-hmm. in Jiu-Jitsu, there are belt levels. Mm-hmm. So there's white, blue, purple, brown, and black. So I'm, I'm brown. And uh, and yeah, I got silver medal for, for India, wow. the world championship. And it was, a, it was the only time where an Indian had competed at that level uh, yeah. on, on the international stage and got a medal. Yeah. So yeah, that was, I think that medal for me is one of the most important ones. The two other medals, which, which are very special to me. Okay. One is a championship in Taiwan called ADCC. Mm-hmm. So Abu Dhabi Combat Club is the world's most prestigious grappling event. Okay. And I went there all by myself and uh, just to fight like a bunch of killers from all over the world. And there was nobody to coach me, nobody to corner me. I yeah. went all by myself and I won my weight class. Okay. And in Jiu-Jitsu, you can also do an open class where you can fight people from all weight classes. Okay. 
so, so in that one i came second in the open weight so yeah that was a big one and the final one was uh, the british open because again no indian had ever won a medal on uh, in in britain yeah. and i got i won gold oh, wow. uh, at purple belt yeah, a couple of years ago so those are the three biggest events for me also okay. because they're good. Yeah, so, thank um, you. And, and it's great that you're doing it you know in sports that we're not traditionally strong at um, which is something you know even more phenomenal now coming to you know the journey of, of starting your cross train fight club in in delhi now as i said this is something that obviously uh, is not uh, something that you know is traditionally very active or popular in india so how was the response when you first started out when you first came back and started the club and how is the response now uh, how is it picked up yeah we i came back to india in 2012 right at the end of 2012 and uh, i completely overestimated the the response i'm going to get in india because mm-hmm. uh, before coming in i did a little bit of market research i created a facebook page okay. uh, and i just tried to gather information as to people do people know about the sport of mixed martial arts do they know jiu jitsu and i got a pretty phenomenal response because nobody in india was teaching mma yeah. like, there were a couple of good gyms uh, in nasik but overall there was no one doing it in delhi or north india so i got a really good response and i came came back and i'm like oh this is like a golden idea like business idea i'm going to come in i'm going to open up the academy we're going to get yeah. flooded of members and it was totally not that yeah. uh, when we came back nobody knew what it was yeah. most of the people had watched this hollywood movie called never back down mm-hmm. and they'd seen it and they're like we want to learn never back down yeah. and they came in they decided they realized you know it's not as glamorous as it looks exactly. it's a lot of hard work it's like thousand push ups a day thousand squats it's sweating it's hot so a lot of people wanted to do it they did a class and they realized actually it's not for us yeah, yeah so they they came and they bailed yeah so that initial period was really difficult like from 2012 to 2016 17 when nobody knew what the sport was in delhi mm-hmm. uh, but it, it, eventually like with, with a bunch of bollywood movies coming through mm-hmm. uh, sultan came in which was about mma uh, dangal came in which 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 helped you know talking about wrestling and and mma so those things helped and now over the last few years the sport has really picked up like this you know ufc the world's largest mma organization has become really popular uh, and we get we get free ufc events in india on television on sony so yeah. it's a, it's it's really good for growing the market in india so it's growing for the last few years i've seen a lot of growth great well that's that's great to hear siddharth and and uh, let's hope that you know it continues to grow and and kudos to you for not just competing yourself but also training the youngsters in the sport so that you know tomorrow they can also win medals like you've done for the country so all the very best to you siddharth saying thanks so much for joining us today amisa thanks a lot appreciate it thanks for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon